last Super Bowl was played right here. Jason, tell me it was a classic. Classic game. 80,000 people on their feet. Seconds left on the clock. No. So Hubie throws a Hail Mary. Touchdown! 166, back online. 60 years ago, Earth was attacked. We won the war, but they destroyed half the planet. Everyone's been evacuated. Nothing human remains. We're here for drone repair with a mop-up crew. This is Jack Harper. I'm good to go. Two more weeks, Jack, and we can finally leave and join the others. Don't take any chances. Hello everyone, my name is Ak and welcome to your number one source for the movie Oblivion. If you don't know anything about this movie, this video is going to be for you because this is the first trailer that has been released for it. Not much information is actually known about it and I feel like it's a good time to kind of go over the basic plot elements, who the director is, who stars in the movie, talk about that kind of stuff. There's not going to be any real spoilers because none of that stuff is known, so you don't need to worry about that. But if you want to know the basics of the movie, just keep listening because I'm going to be talking about it. This movie is directed by a man named Joseph Kosinski. In the past, he directed the movie Tron Legacy, which I'm a fan of. Some people aren't, but I like the movie a lot. He also created the Gears of War advertisement that featured the song Mad World, which happens to be probably my favorite piece of video game advertising ever. It's fantastic, and if you haven't seen it, go check it out. It has me have a lot of faith in what Joseph Kosinski can do directing this film. The screenwriters for it wrote Toy Story 3 and Little Miss Sunshine. I love Toy Story 3, it's incredible, it almost made me cry. I'm not at all concerned about the screenwriting as a result because there's some talented writers behind this movie. It is a high action film, but they've talked non-stop at like Comic-Con and stuff about how it's going to be poignant and you're going to care about what's happening with the plot. It's not going to just be explosions after explosions. And that has me extremely exciting. So let's go over the basic plot lines of it. The main character's name is Jack Harper. He is played by Tom Cruise, obviously. We got to see him run around, carry a gun, do Tom Cruise's stuff. He is one of the last people on Earth. And his job is to repair drones. We got to see that in the, the trailer. There's a lot of drones. A lot of high numbers that he's dealing with, and it makes sense because the drones have to cover the entire Earth. The drones' job are to take out scavengers, and that's the monstrous creatures in the trailer. The scavengers invaded Earth, I believe. I'm, it, it's still mysterious what exactly they did, but they're, they were an unknown threat that really was going to take out all of humanity. So humans had to leave Earth. Um... And so Jack needs to maintain and repair these drones so the drones can go out and hunt down. We got to see how they have lasers to detect who to shoot. The thing is, start some stuff starts to go wrong. 
He's told to go down there, and we get to hear that he doesn't have much time left. So there's shifts, right? So he's going to be able to go enjoy himself and leave work. His eye in the sky is Victoria, played by Andrea Riseborough. Now, I'm not quite sure what's going on with her character, because it looks like, from my understanding at least, from the, the graphic novel that's not out yet, but there's more plot elements that are revealed about that than the actual movie. Um, she is a by-the-books military person. She's not a rebel at all. So it looks like she's just going to want to continue to carry out in the mission and won't stand up to anything, even if what the what they're doing is wrong. Because that's where the conflict comes into nature. You see that he's captured by a resistance group on Earth that's led by Morgan Freeman, which is great because it's Morgan Freeman, right? He plays Malcolm Beach, and he's a resistance leader. There's more to them than just violent resistance, you know? There's a story there, and when he finds... When, when Jack finds this this group of pods that have people in it that we get to see, the main one is Julia Rusakova, who's played by Olga Kurilenko. She's going to get out and tell her story about what's happening, and that's what's going to cause the plot to really go into the swing of things. And you see the drones that Jack was repairing start to turn on the people that were in those pods, and things just go crazy. I want to point out, though, that there are more than just the one pod there with Julia in it. There's a Japanese pod as well. I don't know who that is. I'm assuming that they're going to die. Like, the rest of the people in the pods that are there will die, will get blown up by the drones, and Julia is the only one that's left. So those are the people that we get to see, plus the giant resistance army. Um, I want to talk... I just... I guess I want to nerdgasm about the amazing architecture it almost reminds me of prometheus from a cinematography perspective but th that's some incredible architecture because no one wants to be on the ground because the ground's dangerous with the scavengers i'll call them scavs because that's their nickname they are up in the sky and those buildings are incredible like look at the helicopter that he's flying around i, I want to see this movie in imax to see just these crazy sights i guess i could also touch on what will be a romantic element because he is going to i don't know fall in love with julia at some point and that's going to conflict him as well going against his mission because the drones are going to be out to kill her in addition at one point he is reading a book and morgan freeman is asking you know why are you so curious what are you looking for with these books? The book he's reading is Lays of Ancient Rome. It's a group of poems. And the poem in particular that he's reading is Horatius. The story is these group of three guys were defending a bridge. There was an army coming to Rome and they needed to defend the bridge. The Romans then were going to destroy the bridge. The, the river is completely swollen, it's flooded, and it's their job to hold off the incoming army so the Romans can destroy the bridge. Two of the guys make it back across the bridge before the bridge is destroyed. They're able to make it back. Horatius is stranded. Basically, you think he's going to die because he's on the wrong side of the river with the enemies, but is able to make it across the flooded river and make it to the other side and becomes a massive hero. So I don't know if that has any larger significance or why they would put that in the trailer, but that's just something to keep in mind that, that he could basically be Horatius. There's no evidence there, but it just seems like that bears significance since Morgan Freeman is talking about it and they show the book. The bottom line is that this movie looks to be amazing. From a cinematography perspective, I'm confident with the screenwriters that are involved, I'm confident with the director, and I'm really, really excited to see it. I'm gonna probably be doing more movies of this, like I said, I'm gonna make this a big thing that I'm talking about because it looks really, really cool. If you want to see more, let me know in the comments and let me know what you think about the trailer and if I missed anything that seems like it should be mentioned. Make sure to follow us on Twitter so you don't miss any news about us and you can interact with us if you wanna talk with me, Dewey, Raymond, or Tom. That's how you wanna talk to us is through Twitter. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. My name is Zach Felling, and I will see you next time.